you know, it's it, it became this wonderful thing that happened, the magic in the studio. And, and it's a tribute to, um, you know, the man who created a world famous, incredible sport. And boy, is it ever the right time to be talking about harmony, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's terrible. AC can talk about this more. I just want to know what's going on in your schools, AC. Like, because I think our song can help people heal if they listen to what basketball has done. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. David and AC Earl, man, listen, first off, welcome to the both of you. It's great that we can be here. I appreciate you taking the time, I guess, to be here on the Audacious Living Podcast. I know this podcast, we spend so much time encouraging individuals to you know, take risks and, and live our day, live their life for the fullest and do all the things that we're meant to do. And so uh, wow. it's, it's, it's great to have you all here, man. This is awesome. Thank you. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. For sure. For sure. So, so, so maybe David, I'll start, I'll start with you. Um, uh, now, now you're no stranger to the basketball community. There's no question about that here, here, here in Toronto. Um but uh, th- thirteen rules. Give, give us, give us sort of the, the synopsis, wh- wh- how that came to be, and uh, and what is, what it's all about. Okay. Well, I mean, it was a song project that I started actually within the Facebook group. Elaine Kwan is probably the most important person in terms of keeping the glue together, and I'm sure AC would say that is absolutely true. Mm-hmm. That without Elaine, we would this song wouldn't exist, and and like without us coming together for the reunion. But it was like, it was a bunch of things for me because I, these guys wouldn't have known me as a musician at all. When, when I I worked for Isaiah Thomas, he was my boss. He was also my childhood idol. I grew up, I was born in the, in Grace Hospital on the South Shore of Detroit, because of Detroit River, because of course, Windsor is South of Detroit, right? which most people go, oh, what happened that be? It's America, right? It's got to be, right? It doesn't make sense. That was not it. So we, we had this thing and I lost my brother. And I know Jimmy's lost two of his brothers. So we both have that in terms of common, but I lost my brother. He got sick December 20th and he was gone January 2nd. Right. I mean, oddly, that was like, like, you know, and you just, and he was my youngest brother. There were six of us, but yeah. like, you know, I grew up with hoops and yeah, I had a team. They were called the Pistons and, and Dave Bing was my early hero. And so I had a lot of that, but then this reunion came up. I had written a song about the loss of my brother and in the bridge of that song, I said, I need to recorrect, connect with my friends and family. And because I had moved to a place which was very quiet in the wilderness, I was sort of, I don't know, I would start to create. And so I started the project on Facebook and then people kind of said, hey, maybe. And then Dinosh was one of the original ones who said, hey, I think you might want to help out. And I was like, awesome. Mm-hmm. And then it was just really up to Elaine to, to bring the three men to, to, the, to the studio with no knowledge of what we were doing, but I, but I wrote a song that I thought really gave us the props for the really, really big job. And I don't mean, I don't think we got to call it tough because like, I don't think we saw it that way. We just did what we did and they feel be best to explain this, but like, you know, and, and so they came to the studio and the song that I wrote, I wrote a poem on Canada today called 13 rules and I got great respect. I watched the talk on the selling of the 13 rules a couple of years ago for 4.3 yep. US million to Kansas. I know they're there. Actually, the other day, Bobby, I looked up, I was like, museums in Kansas. I'm like, there's got, this has got to be at the top of the list. Right. Like below 25. Wow. And I'm like, how can these 13 rules with the importance to humanity? Because yes. it's way beyond. Yes. It's way beyond AC and me as men. Way beyond that. This has affected the world in a positive way. Yes. And our song is about harmony. And our song is about how even a guy like me who does not look like a lot of my friends, because I, even though I grew up in circumstances very much similar to a lot of my friends, yep. but like, you know, it's it, it became this wonderful thing that happened, the magic in the studio. And, and it's a tribute to, um, you know, the man who created a world famous, incredible sport. And boy, is it ever the right time to be talking about harmony, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's terrible. AC can talk about this more. I just want to know what's going on in your schools, AC. Like, because I think our song can help 
people heal if they listen to what basketball has done. So I'll throw it to you. Well, well, well before you do, Ace, yeah, David, I want to go back because because when you look at, I mean, so I just love the fact that you start something. So in your case, it was you know the, the, the loss that you experienced. And you create it out of that loss, but then you take from that and you, and, and you create something special that's empowering and you get a harmony. It, it just, so it's, it's very nicely how we, we we can recover and get past or get through situations and create something beautiful. Totally. And, and it was collaboration, right? Yeah. Which I know, Ace, I mean, you always talk about collaboration, AC, is really what's happening in today's world. So, I mean, gotcha, it man. was just a collaboration. Gotcha. gotcha. And, and this man, he he's not a stranger to hip hop and music at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, he's writing a book about it. So, you like, done I, mean, with the game? I got it done. It's published now. You get it done? Come oh on. my gosh! Then I am gonna pump your book, man. I have to help yeah. you. Yeah, hundred thirty-five okay. songs. Yeah, it's done. So yeah. What's what's, what's oh, the yeah. title of that? Awesome. What's the title of the book? Uh, it's one hundred and thirty-five of the most influential in hip hop rap songs of all time, and oh. why, and why. Oh, so man, it, you're going to school me, my friend. I can't yeah, wait to read so, your uh, book. I cannot yeah, wait. So, so, yeah, so, I, so know, I'm, 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 let me think. I'm, I'm, let me guess before we jump with this, AC. We got, yeah. I, um, I'm just, I, 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 want, I don't want an obvious one. I will fight the power, public enemy. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that's what I got for public enemy. <laughs> I knew I'd get one. I knew yeah. I'd get one. <laughs> I was, good. I was, you know, in that one I fought with, it was either that or rubber without a pause. Gotcha. But, gotcha. but I think you, you, you had to go and fight the power, right? Because of what it, what it did, right? Yeah, the mainstream. I mean, it was certainly yeah. one of the more mainstream songs. Yes. I mean, you say rubber without a pause, public enemy. A lot of people are like, what's that, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the true hip hop yeah. heads know that. That's right. right? That's right. But that's right. That's like, right. public enemy is always going to be known for fight the power. But I almost. I had an inkling to almost go with uh, I'm going back to Arizona. Ah, there you go. You remember that Another one? one. That changed the whole political yes, it climate. Was. Yep. Yeah. So yep. Yep. yeah. So I mean, with artists, it it stems from day one, right? 1979, 80, and it goes to current. So it started with it started with me and my buddy with 20 songs. Then we went to 50. Then we went to 75. <laughs> Then we went to 100, and we tried to cap it. And I said, you know what? A lot of these people, even though they're not great artists, but they had a they had something to do with, you know, like Megan Thee Stallion or Ludacris or somebody, you know, somebody I, had something. You're so right. To do. You're, and you're, so, you're, yeah, you're so right. Because I think, what, sorry to cut you, AC, but what what oftentimes yeah. happens is you look at an you 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 you, you evaluate a song. By the size or popularity, the fame of the artist, and yeah, some exactly. instances, and that's not how it should be. Like, right. And in some instances, you know, a timely song such as one we'll talk about, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. you, like, you, like, you like that segue? A timely song will 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 arrive and make its mark, much like you guys have with yours. So, exactly. tell me, AC, when you first right. heard. Right, Dave said to you, "Look, I got this thing I'm working on." Well, I don't know what was the conversation like. How did that come? To, how did it come to be? Tell me. Well, you know, we were on the other side, so we were on the side with Elaine, where Elaine was like, "Hey, you know, you need to do this, 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 this." As we're here, right? So Elaine, you know, as I used, to, you know, it was funny. Elaine cracked the whip, the whip, everybody moving. So, so we're like, "Okay, Elaine okay, Kwan. okay, and, right?" Elaine Kwan, and and you know, she's a inaugural part of the Raptor organization and things that she did for the organization. Yep. And so when she told us we had to do all these things, we're like, okay, if she's telling us we got to do it, we got to do it. So she was like, you know, Hey, you guys got to go over here. This guy's doing this. And she didn't have that much information. Uh, so we were oh, kind of joking around in the van and we were like, okay, is there food there? Is there something there? She goes, yeah, they'll have food and snacks. And you only want to be there 30 or 40 minutes. And so we said, okay, fine. So, that whole morning, we had did a lot of button-up interviews where it was scripted, where we only had a couple of minutes here on a, on right. a new show, a couple of minutes there. So it was all kind of the way they wanted it to be. It was really short and you know short and quick and sweet up to the point where they wanted. So we didn't really have a chance to kind of be ourselves, you know. Right. So we're right. in the studio. Right. We haven't seen each other in. 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, a lot of, you know, 
And so, you know, we can't really joke around. Then it's like, time, you know, we got to do a mini interview. So then we get to the studio. Now it's our time, right? right? It's like, right. hey, hey, Kick hey. It. And it's the, the barriers that now have broken down. Yes. The music is flowing. You know, then Jimmy love, King man. comes and in. Love, we love, hadn't love. seen Jimmy. We hadn't seen Jimmy all day. He had a late flight. So then it just got to be a fun social thing, right? So it's almost like, it, like if you put, you know, Public Enemy, Tribe Call Quest, Run DMC, LL Cool J, KRS One in a room, something good is going to happen, right, right? Right. And that's kind of how it was, right? Me, Tracy, Jimmy, Denage, you know, Elaine, you know, we haven't seen each other. Now it's fun. We've already did all our work for the day. So now we're just having fun playtime. Sorry, just 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 for our listeners, Jimmy and Tracy, give us full names. So listening, who are those? Oh guys? yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy King, Fab Five, played at the uh, University of Michigan, was yep. inaugural uh, second round draft pick. Yep. In Toronto of '95, Tracy Murray, great UCLA standout. Me and Tracy played AAU since we were 16 together. Went to Nike camp when we were 17 together. I've known Tracy's family for many years. Played in the NBA. Um, he was waived by Houston, and Isaiah gave him a second chance to come in. He came in on a non-guarantee contract and just killed it his first year and extended his NBA career for many years, ended up playing at Washington, and then came back to Toronto and play. He did. He did. Uh, currently UCLA broadcaster. Yep. So I love tuning in late late nights and catch the Pac-12 network, and I – here I look for hear Tracy's voice. I'm like, yeah, that's my guy. As I'm falling asleep on the couch waiting on ESPN. So yeah. So so, so you know, I, I, what I vividly remember about those early days. Uh, uh, well, the, the early days of the Raptors, they had that dispersal draft, right? And so, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, expansion know, draft, expansion, expansion draft, draft, yeah, draft expansion draft. Expansion yeah. draft. Mm-hmm. And, and they had a bunch of guys dispersed on something entirely different. <laughs> they had the expansion draft, and, and and so Tracy wasn't protected. So 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 when you looked at the Raptors in that early days, it was just a bunch of I don't want to use the word cast offs, if you will. Well, it was cast off. It was cast yeah, off. Let's enough. be clear. Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah. yeah. Right? Each team, each team could only protect eight players. Right. 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 So, um, and it was actually too many players for the draft. Me and Isaiah talked about that. There were too many players to be drafted yeah. and almost not enough roster spots. So Toronto right. had drafted, I want to say, 22 players. Got you. Okay. And the salary cap was only half. Right. right. But like, you know, me being in the NBA a couple of years now, I'm like, this don't make sense. You can right. only yeah. guarantee 15, 16 guys. We got 22 guys. That's right. That's right. And we got some draft picks, and Isaiah brought some guys in. Yeah. <laughs> well, 30 we're guys a kid. Hey, we're looking around like some of us ain't going to be. Here. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> now, AC, t- tell them about all your firsts because I, I love all your firsts. Tell them about Yeah, that. so I was, um, you know, I was, on, I was, I was on, on that inaugural team. So the first yeah. game, so the last preseason game. Uh huh. We, we had a little dust up, but t- I forget who we played, but there was a dust up. Okay. And a lot of guys got technicals and suspension. So one was Oliver Miller. Yes. Uh, somebody else had got a sus- couple guys where they couldn't play. So now the rotation went a little further. Down the bench, So right? Zon Tabak ended up starting. Yes. And, and then that pushed me to be like the second or third yes. center. Yes. So I got in. And I had always kind of prided myself from the Celtic days of staying ready, getting ready for your shot. You know, the Celtic way, that's their way, you know. Yep, yep. So, for instance, I got in on the second quarter, and I just got hot. So, I was the first Raptor to score double digits in a game. So, some guys had more points, but I scored 10 in that yep. second quarter. Yep. Then I was the first Raptor to block a shot. And so, you know, then – I, you know, I started getting tired. So I started like pump faking <laughs> and I would get fouled. And the other guys had gotten fouled, but nobody made a free throw. I was the first Raptor to make a free throw. And then, and then uh, th- throughout the, throughout the season, uh, we played later on in Minnesota and yep. um, coach Brendan Malone put me in 
And um, I I didn't play the whole game, and they put me in the third quarter. So I was fresh, and I was the first Raptor to grab over 10 rebounds in a quarter. And then my buddy Marcus Camby took my record. I think he, yeah. he got like 12 or 15, you know, Campbells. Would you have been the first Raptor to score 50 points too? Uh, I was the first Raptor to score 40. And then 40, my yeah. buddy Tracy, and then Tracy Murray broke my, my buddy Tracy broke my record. So Tracy didn't like that. Tracy didn't yeah. like that. And I, I had the 40. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I had 40. And then I was the first. I had. To, I actually had the, the career, the, the season and career high in the new Boston Garden. Yes. And then uh, Todd Day took that record too from me. Gotcha. So gotcha. I had gotcha, some good gotcha, records. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So. So, so you know, it's funny because when you think about those early days and, and harmony is a theme. So we stay on the theme of harmony for a second, right? Mm -hmm. if, if, if there was ever a time it was needed, it would have been back then. As you said, you know, there was 22 players picked. There was extra guys brought in. There was more guys signed, you know, a new, new country, a uh, new team. There's all these things going on that, and, and, and some, and some of these guys had no, they're, they're rookies, had no idea. You had a rookie in Damon Stoudemire that knew nothing about nothing. Yeah. I mean, people didn't know you had to have a passport to go across the border. Yeah. People's passports had to be renewed. People had to get work visas. Um, you know, we're changing currency left and right. How are they going to pay us? Like yeah. what bank's going to get used? Yeah. I mean, you know, and I, you know, we tell the story all the time and it's in a lot of the books There's a lot. So a lot of guys didn't want to be there. You know, right. my guy, BJ Armstrong from Iowa, who I was excited to play with, had got drafted. Yep. So I'm like, oh, this is going to be cool. BJ, right. my guy's going to be there. And then I'm mm -hmm. hearing like, no, BJ don't want to be here. And yeah. I'm like, what? And I'm like, oh, man, this ain't good. Like, if yeah. BJ don't want to be there, this is not a good situation. And then Victor Alexander, who I knew from, he played at Iowa State. Oh, man. I knew Big Vic, and he didn't want to be there. He had requested a trade. And so I'm like, man, this is, this is, I mean, it was like, we're all looking around, like, what do we, I don't know, like, what's the next right. step? Like, there wasn't, yeah. it was so new that, you know, in like in today's age, there would have probably been some person there. We would have had meetings or like a document that said, yeah. okay, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to work, right? right. Here's, here's, here's how you're going to get paid. Here's how you're going to, um, here's your person, there's your liaison, make sure your passport is up to right. date. This is the bank we're going to use. I mean, it was nothing, man. Guys were, some guys were taking their check in and cashing it, <laughs> sending it over back to the border because they didn't know if the check was going to cash. I mean, wow. guys were going to the bank, pulling out cash, like running around with thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars because they didn't right. know if the team was gonna stay. Right, I mean, right, right. It right. was just nuts, man. It was nuts. Yeah, and I and I can I can certainly see that again. All it all being just new and all being fresh and no one knows what. I mean, I mean, and yeah. so so you know you know AC from your perspective, I mean, you, from the player standpoint, but even Dave from your side, and you were an, I'm gonna say administrator, if you will, for lack of a better term. And yeah, yeah but I worked in the player department, right? I did okay, the yeah. merchandising, right? So I helped. That with John and I in the NBA, we did all the stuff in relation to selling the product. And that's John Bitov. Let's be clear for those. John Bitov. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, John Bitov, yeah. the original owner. Yeah. And and I was going to go back, like you said, like it was really about leadership. Um, the leadership, certainly the players got leadership, but Isaiah was my boss and he's a great leader for us. He was a great yeah. leader at that time. And I would say AC would probably agree with me on that. And, yeah. and John too. Like, for as young as he, like, I mean, we were all 30 years old, man. Like, 30, yeah. 33, John yeah. was 33. That was, uh, he probably 35 by the time the franchise was. But yeah, I, I mean, some of the players, I'll cut you off. Some of the players were just as old as the, you guys, like John yeah. Sally and Eddie. Oh, Eddie yeah, Pinkney sure. Yeah. Were just as old as you guys. So it was Willie like, Anderson. you know. Willie Anderson, I'm sure. Yeah, Willie yeah. Anderson, yeah. Um, you know, Tony Massenberg. Yeah, some yeah. of those guys. Were, yeah, so it was like, yeah. I mean, we worked yeah, hard, yeah. But, like we were motivated to work hard. We wanted a lot of people to see basketball. Like we were the people that started it, like e even people that are John's friends that weren't directly involved, but they were all guys doing hoops. We were doing street and Smiths, looking up all the books and doing all sure. the, the, sure. the fantasy stuff back in the nineties. Like that was me. Right. Yeah. But yeah. like, I not like for me and then to have a guy like Jimmy, because of course I was a guy who was a fan of Michigan still am. And like, their football team's pretty rocking good right now, and they're eleven and zero. But like, um, 
yeah, so it was just good leadership. And I don't remember, I maybe there'd be conflict within the locker room that I, Daisy can talk to, but certainly within that, we were just too busy to be conflicted with anything. Got you. So, but the, the, but there is a part of this narrative, guys, that I think is important to understand back then. I, I know the landscape is vastly different, but at the end of the day, you're doing something impossible. You're bringing basketball to a hockey country. That's just the oh, bottom line. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, hockey, baseball, yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and, so, and, and no one else, and, and, and this talking was something no one thought was even possible. No, and, so and I came basketball. out of television. Yeah. I came out of television and NBA was getting best game ever would be like a normal Thursday, whatever TNZ game now would have like 10,000 people. That would be it in the whole country. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. so if you looked at what I saw, because one of the things, and and I see was seen it in the book, but what I really did was make the business case for the NBA to come because I knew television. I knew the money that was going to come in from that side because I was negotiating deals. Right. So that's why John brought me in because I had the television back. Background. I just came from Barcelona at the Olympics and I saw Olympics. the drinks and, and I was like, I would bow down to David Stern's brilliance because in 19, you could, you could have got a franchise for 3 million bucks right. in 1980. Right. And in 93, they're asking for 125 million. And like at that time, and that was, that team's worth 3.1 billion. Right, like right, crazy, right? Right, 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 right. It's, again, it's just, it's just the idea uh, of, of doing some, cause, cause I'm, I, I'm sure Dave, I'm sure at the time, you know, you, you know, you, you maybe you're, you're with your friends, guess I'm bringing basketball to Canada. People must thought you're crazy. There, there, uh, there must've yeah. been doubters. Oh no. Yeah. More than that. And I, AC knows the story. Cause I think I told it at the reunion, but like my head of VP of HR at CTV television, which ended up becoming a broadcaster, which is part of my relationship that ended up turning it back. Cause after I won, I'm getting like a ball here somewhere. Congratulations from CTV, right? <laughs> the head of HR, her husband was the PR guy for Palestra. Let me drop this. Like when the announcement came down on John's birthday, yep. that, that we had won, um, they, they, the rumor was Petty was on his way to pick up champagne and there's there's a news report where there's an empty room and a party room and everything. They had it all set up yep. and they didn't get it. Um, but like th- that just is like the start of it. But when, when TSN came on, Michael Landsberg said, sometimes things in life are neither right nor fair. <laughs> that was his opening line. You know why it wasn't fair? Because Labatt owned TSN and mm-hmm. Labatt backed Palestra. Right. And that was Larry Tonnenbaum, and that was Richard Petty. Yes, and the, and I was the difference because I didn't present. Right, I made the presentation, and I said to the men, "I'm not an entrepreneur. You're entrepreneurs. These men want to receive entrepreneurs. If you don't have money in the deal, you should not talk." Right, and that was a strategy because we had to be different, yeah. and then we had a blind man in the room. And because John was so freaked out, I've been on the road with the Rolling Stones. I'm like. John, they spent seven million dollars on the stage. Right. We're right. not gonna beat Michael Cole at that game. He's got magic. Right. Like magic's if they want to bring in players and do that, that maybe it's the time. Yeah, I mean, how we how how different would it have been if magic would have got that? I mean, sure. that I mean, that's a that's a thing in itself that they yeah. go with magic's yeah. group, you know, and ma- yeah. everything magic touches is gold. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So he learned obviously something from that AC that probably helped him later. Right? And I don't know magic. all those details. I'd love to know that. But yeah. all I know is that when we came, we were right after them. Yes. And it was a loadout from a rock show, man. Sure. Like, like, like the hallway. The hallway was intimidating. And I had pulled John to the side. I'm like, and John's going, oh, I told you, he's like, he's all getting freaked out, right? But the, but the solid thing for me was always his father. Because yes. JB, his dad, yeah. and I were solid, man. Like, I had many times where I had a different view of what John had. And I didn't say, I'm right or wrong. I said, let's go to your dad and yeah. let him decide, yeah. right? And he would always help us. And so that was how it did. But, like, you know, those guys... You know, we had a blind man in the room when we did the first radio address of a team without a name using the New York Knicks announcers and mm. fanfare for the common man and like just made it like a hype thing. And they talked about how the first basketball game had actually right. been played right. in Toronto right. and right. how the game was Canadian. 
Yes. And Alan Naismith had created it. Yep. So if you really go back, and like the first thing I did that I think was of substance for the team was they were going to send in the video about how great they were. How mm. good that reminded me. Where I said, John, they can read your financial statements. Tell right. them how much you love basketball. Yes, tell the story. Right. And that's what we did. We were the basketball ones. So, you know, I changed it. But the harmony thing now, we should probably get to what's going on today because, like, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad that people are, you know, so divided. And, you know, the populism movement really puts one side against another. That's right. That's and right. and that's not going to be healthy because we as humans can't live alone. Yes, that's right. right. And and every person like I learn and take from all the all my friends from the OG Raptors yeah, that have yeah. helped me understand life. And we do the same. But like we're all different. Every like we were the most diverse group. Of and and, that, and that's the beauty about it. Right. That's the beauty about it, because the, our, our differences and, and and now, you know, these days, inclusion is a big part of our other dot conversation, uh, the importance of inclusion, the importance of recognizing the differences, appreciating what different people bring to the table. You know, that's what's happening now, which I think those are good dialogues to have and necessary because of the divide that you talked about. Yeah, I mean, it has to be. You can't, I mean, people don't learn about each other unless they actually interact. Got you, got you. And gotcha. and and like hoops can bring, I, I heard someone the other day said they didn't like the person so much that even though they shared the same fanship with a team, they still didn't like it, right? So there's obviously sometimes it doesn't work. Right. But right. I think, you know, when you're at a sports event yes, and the guy beside you and you are just like right into it and he doesn't look like you, I don't get him. I'm like, we're there. It's the energy, man. Yes. And that's the beauty of basketball is that, like, even Naismith, he studied Hebrew. He was a Christian, but he studied Hebrew. He wanted to understand the other perspectives. You know that. Take that and go, you know, and then he went out of necessity and created the most amazing game that has had impact that he would never have imagined. No, 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 but no, I, not at all. My God, are we lucky yeah. that the no. world had that man mm -hmm. because it gave AC a job and me a job. And that job brought joy to people. Absolutely. He did something. He sees an entertainer. That's why he's so good at what he does. Because the man entertains all the time, even with his teammates. So, so, so okay, AC, how, how different would your life be if, if basketball wasn't there? I mean, 100%. Um, Football, probably, eh? <laughs> uh, no, well, no. Um, I my, my dad was great at football, and I played football for a little bit. I played tight end, and it's a funny story. In fifth grade, I I knocked a kid out on a triple reverse, okay. and the at a at a scrimmage, and the mom came down and yelled at my dad, and and was like, "Why are you letting an eighth grader play with these kids?" And my dad said, "He's only in fifth grade," so <laughs> I was like scared to like hit people after that because gotcha. I was gonna hurt them. So. Um, I would have went into music. I mean, I was I was a rapper, hip hop head, just as I was turning basketball right. So, like you know, it was in my book, and I tell people all the time, like I had Run DMC, I had Curtis Below the Breaks, I had Sh Sugar Hill Gang, like I had all that stuff. Like I was on that, I was in that movement, yes. right? Um, and the defining you, you, moment of music. You, you were friends with Wu-Tang Clan back then, I remember. Exactly, yep, yep. yep. I, I mean, I, I actually went on tour with Run DMC at a Dita Street Ball event in Germany, and I ate dinner with Russell Simmons and Run DMC and his family and went out. So, I mean, that was, you know, me growing up as Russ, Run DMC and then being with them. But the defining moment was, and people, will, if you're a real, real true hip-hop head, you know this, it's called the Fresh Fest, yeah. right? That was the summer tour that most of the Def Jam artists, it was yes. always Houdini, yes. Beastie Boys, Run DMC, LL Cool J, yep. and, and uh, Public Enemy. Ah, yes. yes. And they, they were coming to Chicago. And back then, you bought the, you bought the tickets at record stores. Yes. So you, you went into a record store, and they would pull it up on a computer, and you bought it through Ticketmaster. Yep. They'd show you where your seat is. Yep. So every day I'd go in and I'd talk to the record dude and I'd have my money and I finally got sixth row, like seat five at Fresh Fest. Yep. J June 20 something, July something. And then I go home and my dad is like, well, you got some basketball camp or something you got to go to. 
So I'm like, fresh vest or basketball cap? That's a tough man. That's tough. I went yeah. to basketball cap. And but you know what's funny because every now and then you know, you'll hear older people, a generation, talk about fresh vest, and I'm just like, I had fifth row seats. Oh my to gosh! Like that you know what I mean? To like yeah. so. Yeah, I would have been in the music. I would have did something in the music. Um, you know, I would have done something into music. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably where I would have went. And then, yeah, you know, yeah. later on, I would have went to probably writing like I am now or even coaching gotcha. maybe or administrative gotcha. and something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, the, 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 I think the point really is is how important the game of basketball has been. And it still is, right? And yeah, and it's, a, it's a bridge. I mean, the, like the gap, like the bridge gap, like when, you know, we talk about this in Toronto, when we were at the game, besides the Knicks and the Lakers, we were the next team that stars came to watch because oh, yeah. they were doing the movies there, right? Yes. Samuel L. Jackson and Sylvester Stallone, because they had the, Canada had the movie deal where if you did movies over there, it was like a tax break. Tax, West okay. Okay. Night. So but all, all the artists that came to town too, like Backstreet Boys. And exactly. All, those, all these right? guys would be at the Toronto Raptor game, which was like if you went to Sacramento or you went to Atlanta, there would be nobody there at the game famous. Yes. There, yes. Even in Chicago, the only two people that were there were Oprah and Stedman and Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Jackson. <laughs> right. Those are the only one there. Yeah. After a while, you get tired of seeing Oprah there. Okay, it's always Oprah. It's always Stedman. It's always Jesse Jackson. You go to the Knicks game. Or, you know, Spike, okay? So yep. at the Raptor game, you know, and Sal, Sal would always know some kind of way, right? John Sally. So yep. Sal would come in and be like, hey, man, it's Sammy, it's Sammy and, and Rocky and Sylvester Stallone tonight. So everybody would everybody would get all <laughs> dressed up and get – everybody would be chilling. No, that's so good. And, and try to get out there and warm up. And, and, then, and then you would shoot. You would shoot. Yep. On that basket where they were there, so the ball would kind of roll over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, hey, uh, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's it's so funny again. Remember, and 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 you guys were a bunch of castaways, and you got yeah. the biggest stars, movie stars coming to watch you, right? Yeah, yeah. And it just shows you how 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 life changes real quickly, right? And you know, and you're and you and and you're 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 a celebrity in another country because regardless. Where you went in Canada, you were known. You were a Toronto Raptor. Well, I remember yeah, we and went I think... to this after party. We went to this party, and I was somehow like the MC. Because you know, I was I <laughs> was just drawn to the mic. Was, right, the right. Where the mic afraid, is, it just got you. Know, you. I'm not afraid to get on the mic. You know, Tracy and all those guys. <laughs> duh, you know, they don't want to do it. Duh, David, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on there, and Samuel L. Jackson was the host, and then it was me. So it's me and Samuel L. Jackson behind stage, and this is what Sammy told me. He's like, you got this big fella. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay. This is Samuel L. Jackson, right? Telling me I got it. And you know what? I nailed it. I nailed it. Because I was like, yeah. I can't let Samuel L. Jackson down. Like, oh, I got you. <clears throat> man. In the studio, in the studio, I, he was one take, only one take, man. He was always yeah. right on the first time. This man is a pro. So, so, so uh, no, I, 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 I love that. And I love that story with Samuel because that really speaks to, to what went on back then and what, what life was. Um, uh, why did you use 13 rules? Obviously we know the basketball connection, you know, but, but yeah, what, what, I don't know. I like, I mean, I had watched that documentary uh -huh. and about it selling and I was fascinated because it was only supposed to sell for like 2 million. So it went way up. Yes, it was one of those things, and I don't know the truth behind this. I'd love to know. There was another bidder from another university. I don't know if it was Kentucky. I don't know who else was trying to get it, but Kansas, the Booth family, right? So they're the ones that acquired it, and they have they just reopened it for 2023 for a museum because the world has got to see yeah. what that man did. He had 14 days to do it. Wow. Didn't do anything for 13. Hit the 14th day, writes 13 rules, get typed up, and then they just start making it better. Mm. But, like, I don't know. How how many games can you trace to that specific okay. of a moment in time with a need from a man who was just trying to solve a problem? Yeah, yeah. And that problem he solved could be 
global peace. Yes. Because yeah. his game is that impactful because it yep. brings people like AC and I together. Yes. And I, I got to have my dream boss, yes. a Hall of Fame NBA player. Yep. And I think that's part of what helped us with all the celebrities yep. is yep. that we weren't like, you know, Isaiah, world champion twice, right? 28 yep. points in a four. <laughs> Watch that. Watch his quarter with 28 points. Yep. Oh, my yep. God. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. In some ways, I can see the correlation between, uh, uh, you know, he, you know, here Dr. Naismith, thirteen rules, uh, with the idea of solving an issue, bringing people together. Now we've got thirteen rules, the song, the movement that's doing the same thing. Yeah, we want it to. We want this to be a message that, first of all, it's created through collaboration and only exists because of love. It does not exist without that. Right. And it was trust too. AC and the guys trusted me, but I also gave them an environment where I had basketballs and, and I had a bunch of cards I hadn't opened from 1994 and I gave them to the men. And that was a, like a neat little thing. It was because I was the first March guy, right? Right. So like, you know, so those little things happened. There was magic in that studio. And I can just say I was the fly in the wall because to watch what AC had described earlier, that was wonderful. And now, we're saying like, we have this thing. So what I really want now is a partnership with Kansas first. Okay. I want to go, I I wrote, I'm a business professor. Okay. I've written a business case of what happened in that room and why we won the franchise. Yep. I wrote the mission statement for the team yes. that got accomplished. Yes. And that mission That's statement cool. included all our dancers and all our, wow. like, the Raptor, everybody was part of that. Yes, it wasn't yeah. meant to be. We weren't, didn't define ourselves right. as being in the business of basketball. We're in the business of family entertainment. Beautiful. Beautiful. And, and that was different. And that's why, because we didn't expect to win. My God, AC described. They gave us basically one hand that tied, tied behind the back. Right? Uh, we didn't have a chance. They didn't give us the money. Do you remember um, how many other bids were at that time? Yeah, well, there was Vancouver, and yeah, then there Vancouver. was a few other Toronto bits too, okay. right? Okay, okay. So the NBA wasn't like then. That, that was a big difference. We said, "Don't assume they're coming." I'm going to show them how much money they can make over time if they trust us, and we're going to do it with research. And we did research across Canada. Yeah, but we were yep. bidding for a Toronto team. Right. That's right. the point of difference, right? Because we could say to the NBA. You know who our fans were? They were eight to 14 year old boys who loved Michael Jordan. Yes. That's a simple yeah, thing. I mean, it it could have went to it realistically, and people don't kind of remember there there used to be a minor league that was the uh Cowards. I want to say it's the six four and under league or so I forget what it was, but there was a there was a team in Edmonton, there was a team in Winnipeg. Yeah, and those teams were were successful. Right. Right. Uh, so there was there was some talk that the NBA would just go back in and piggyback, right, of, and and, be, and go there. Like why why try to reinvent the wheel, right? Sure, just go to Winnipeg or go to Edmonton, where they already had one of those minor league teams, and it was it was really close because when we we actually played in Winnipeg on a preseason game, and it was packed. I mean, oh, yeah. they had food for us, they had everything set up for. I mean, and we were like, wow, like. We could have been here. Wow. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, and that we was us. Here. I think what we were doing uh, there was taking the idea that Blue Jays always had with the caravan, and we just took the whole team instead of right. just like yeah. three players, right? I yeah, mean, it's yeah, just yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, back then you needed to do that for recognition and under you know these are players. I it's didn't in remember. the game if they didn't know it. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Hey, hey, I, 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 you know, you, I have to bring up because, and uh, slightly off top of it, totally on top as far as I'm concerned. But you know, you, uh, you know, that Toronto Raptor team uh, was, you know, one of the the, the ten teams uh, that beat the Bulls that year, mm -hmm. right? The seventy-two and ten Bulls. Let's mm -hmm. be clear on that. The seventy-two and ten Bulls had yeah. Michael Jordan. They yeah. lost to the Toronto Raptors that year. Yeah, That's tell that story, you see. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of what they call understory to it. So one of the understories to it is we played them at 12 o'clock on that Sunday, I believe. And one of Michael's closest friends was uh, um, Alvin Robinson. Yes. They'd actually played in the Olympics yep. together, and they were yep. they were like 
you know, about the same age and they were, you know, betting partners. And Alvin and John Sally had a idea to throw a party the night before. But it would be imperative that the Bulls come, Dennis, Scotty, Michael. And so Alvin through this, Alvin and John Sally went in and did this extravagant party. I've never seen anything like it. It had like four VIPs, right? It was like regular, then it was a VIP, then it was a other VIP, then it was a Michael Jordan VIP, <laughs> then it was a Dennis Rodman VIP. And when you walked in, the cigar smoke was like from a movie, right? And then you kind of saw in the pa- in the corner, it's like Michael sitting up with Alvin and John Sally. And it was just like a scene, a movie scene, right? And and then on the other side of that, Zan Tabak had played Olympic ball with Tony Kukoc. Okay. And so Zan's Zan's job was to take Tony out. <laughs> so Zan took Tony out. Okay. So from what I understand, there was a lot of sleeping. There was not a lot of sleeping that night. I, oh, I yeah. got home at like four or five in the morning and we had to be back. I think I, I think we stayed at the sky. A lot of us stayed at the sky. Yeah, because that's right. Mm-hmm. There's no way we can get back. So, you know, basically we warmed down the night before. And then, like, Pippen was lethargic. Rodman was lethargic. Tony couldn't do anything. And it was just Michael, 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 Michael. And then the last bit of the story was Brendan Malone was the one who created the Jordan rules. Ah, and so yes, he, knew, he, yeah. he coached at, you know, he coached. Right. And then Isaiah would come in that whole week and kind of tell us a little tidbits too, right? Like, hey, don't let them do this. If they try to go up five, stop the run. Don't let them push it to seven. Don't let them push it to nine. Like, you know, so we were we were really prepped for it, really. And then, so as the game went on, we could see that they didn't want to do nothing. It was just Michael, right? It was just Michael. And then Alvin Robinson said, you know what? I got him. Let me get him. And so then Alvin and Jordan started kind of going back and forth. Yeah, They were making side bets. They were making side bets in the game. <laughs> and we had them. And I'll tell you what, if he had one more second on that clock, you Absolutely. know, he hit that shot in the corner and it went Absolutely. off glass. And if you take, you look at the picture, yes, there were six or seven people rushing the court right next to him. That Like it should have been, like it should have been a technical foul. On yeah. us because we had fans coming on the yes on yes the yes court. yes yes yeah and he hit that shot man and we looked up we all looked at each other like we did it we did it we did it we did it I mean, yeah. so it was a lot of it wasn't just we just went out and beat them like we had all yeah, the game moons plan aligned. all the moons oh. aligned right twelve o'clock game yeah party at night. Yep. Everybody take everybody out, and then you know, yeah. D- along, D- so. D- D- Damon Stoudemont had a monster game. I mean, it was, it was, a it was like game everything because, aligned. Because one thing that Jordan struggled with over, and he'll tell you this: like there's small a good interviews. He small, he struggles with small guards, right. and Isaiah told him that, and Brendan told him that, and he didn't believe it. Even Damon didn't believe it until it started. Till he was like Rocky, you know, after he yes. had a couple of hits, like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, That's this it. works. Yeah. Yeah. So we were, you know, every time he came back to the bench, we were like, yeah, man, you got him. You got him telling you he don't like it. And then Damon was left-handed, right? And so yes. oh, it, that's really another... was very difficult. it was difficult yeah. for Jordan to guard that. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. 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 So I mean, we had everything. It was like check the box, check the box, check the box. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everything check yep. the box. Yeah. 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 Well, I, well, it's funny because when you look at that, you look, you, you look at that, those listed, those that those ten games they lost. You know the Toronto Raptors stand like a sore thumb, like you're yeah. like, huh? How'd that yeah, happen? Plan. But so, yeah, a good plan. <laughs> the plan worked, and I will tell you, I will tell you, you know, Sunday afternoon games are a staple in Toronto, and that whole Saturday night taking out the team before it's been used since then a few more times. I'll let you know. Oh, that. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> And they got in early. They got in early too because yeah, yeah. Yeah. that was the other thing. Like Sal and them had confirmed they came. They may have came from somewhere. They may have came from Detroit or came from Probably. New York. Right. So yeah. so we got them. We got them on that back to back too. So yeah. it was just like everything happened like 
early. Like it was, I mean, it just, you couldn't write a better script on that. No, what a game that was. I was there. Oh my gosh. I, I think what also makes the, 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 the movement powerful uh, and having, you know, OG Raptors in the mix and Dave, you're doing your thing and, and others, uh, you know, a, a part of this thing is that you, you, you all set a foundation of something really 100%. special. Something 100%. that I mean, I mean, you know, we, we could talk about the 2019 championship the Raptors won. That wouldn't have happened without the OGs and the foundation being laid several years before. 100%. I mean, right? I, I think I think we we embraced the culture, we embraced the country. Like, you know, we didn't come in like we're these rich NBA guys. Right. And this oh, is no. like, why are we, you know, like we embraced the culture. Like we like a lot of the guys live downtown, they ate, they ate out, they 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 you know they they went to coffee shops and things right around there, and so people got got used to seeing them, and we got used to seeing people, and it yes. was just we we embraced it, we embraced it, and and I think that that like you said that set the culture where you know we like these guys, right? Yeah. Like you know we yeah. love these, yeah. Guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we and we took and we took what was our biggest disadvantage, which was this cavernous. Stay, um, basketball arena right. cut out of the sky now. Yes, and we turned that into an advantage and how yes. did we do that we made um, that weekend or around those four days you guys played in front of 110,000 people in three games yeah well the first game was 35 or 32,000 yeah. wow. and that was insane because I remember when we played the Nets it was the Nets at the time we played them and they were looking around like man this is like wow a football stadium so it was like people kind of bought into that like you know and it was yeah, cool right. for us because, but it like wasn't said, expensive like we did not no we it was not no, we get, a ticket, you could get a ticket like five or ten bucks yeah to go yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I i went down there for sure lots of times yeah, yeah. sampling yeah. right like we wanted people to come and watch if you don't put bums and seats you, you there's a formula to it right like when you win you sell more merchandise because sure. fans are happy like all that's down to a science now, yep. right? I mean, yep. but but back then it was just us going, no, those things make sense. We gotta make these people happy. We got we gotta entertain the hell out of them. We probably spent more on entertainment than um, the average NBA team at that time. Yes. Right? Because we Man. have to well, ge ge gentlemen, this is this has been uh uh an absolute pleasure for a bunch of reasons for me. Uh, being a homegrown Toronto guy for some, and you're a uh, hoops guy too, basketball. right? You got hoops guy. connections. Absolutely, I, you know, a guy that loves basketball. I've always loved basketball. Uh, I I was a fan back then. Um, you know, I love those. I've always supported my home team. I always love the Raptors, and I'm sure AC, you get a lot of love from people all the time. And you know, I I think back uh, to to just the appreciation I have. Uh, for the work you did back then. And I have appreciation for what you're doing now because you're keeping that spirit alive. Uh, so I want to congratulate you guys. Uh, shout out to the movement. I think, again, the, the spirit of harmony is something special. Uh, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have, you know, it's, I, I think the same way, you know, the, the, the Raptors of that legacy that you guys are a part of, that foundation, you, you've created something now that can create another legacy as far as I'm concerned. So, so thank you guys, man. Thank you for that. That's, that's the goal. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, so sure. yeah my man. Let's hey, let's uh, you know, let's try to schedule something on and do it. Do a show on that book, man. See what you think. Absolutely. Yeah, you oh, that no, hey, see, we we absolutely, man. Because I need to. Yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some thought into that. So, which other song? I'm a, so you said 135, right? 135. 135. So give me right, right, I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna wager on how much. How many of the 135 you get? Yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, we see, but, but I'm, what I'm trying to do, I'm also trying to figure out, like, I mean, there's some, you know, the, the obvious ones that you, you'll, you'll gravitate to, but you yeah, know, there's like, two we struggle. There's, there was, there was three that I struggle. I struggle with Nas, <laughs> Jay Z, and Tribe Called Quest. Like, which songs are theirs to put in there? Yes, I get you. I get you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, 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 if you said, if you said Eric B. Rock Kim, right? Everyone's gonna say, yeah, paid in full, right? I either follow, yeah, I think I pick. I may have picked either follow the leader or or pay your or paid in full. I can't remember. We're gonna have to. We're, we're gonna have to make that list of the yeah. controversial ones. Like which one? Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. We're gonna have to AC. We're gonna we're gonna circle back and do that for sure. Because um, yeah, yeah. I'm a hip hop guy too, so I mean I don't do basketball yeah. and motivational podcasts. I do hip hop as well too. Yeah. So for yeah, sure, man, let's do it. Let's do it. G- g- guys, thank you for this, man. Good to spend a time with y'all. Um, for 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 our listeners, Dave, if you wanted to send people. Uh, 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 somewhere where can you send them to learn yeah, more? So, I, we've got Instagram, which has got a lot of the media we've done, and it's uh, 13 rules, no space underscore ink. And you'll gotcha. find it on Instagram and 13 rules.ca's website. We've got a bunch of things in process, but we're, we're really now this is where I'm taking off on an entrepreneurial way, right? Yeah, but before the most important thing for me right now is to make this song forever. Gotcha. And to do that, I need Kansas to have a partnership with me. And I was at, I've asked Jimmy King if he can get his fraternity to help me give me yep. a contact at Kansas. Yep. And, 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 you know, and then we're, we're going to do a partnership with the oldest court in the world, yes. which is in St. Stephen. New runs with. And I'm going to partner with them because yep. they're, they're building a museum. I want to be part of that. Yep. Yep. And that museum is important because it had an OG player that did it. So even though not only is the court claimed to be the oldest, although there's going to be a fight in that Paris sure. and yeah, yeah. all that, it doesn't really matter. I want my song played there, our song played there. But like you've you've got um, you know a real connection. So it's just it it has been a wonderful journey, and that court is important. And the man who built it played in the first Beautiful. game ever played. Beautiful. A Smith was there. So okay. even though it's like maybe even if it isn't the oldest court, it's an OG court. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I who made the court played in the first game. Dave, I I'm mean, ten. And ten men in a planet of nine billion people. If it wasn't then that, but you know what I mean. Like, I do, just, I do. Listen, Dave, if there's anyone that can make it happen, the guy that brought basketball to Canada, he's the one. I got my money on you, my man. So. We're gonna Thank keep you, the, we'll keep the lines open, and when it happens, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll chat again, and we'll do this. And AC, we're gonna, and hey we're guys gonna, out there, buy AC's book, please. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we. Book. And AC, he's got we're gonna, lots of hoops books. Help we're gonna AC. we're gonna circle back, AC. We're gonna circle back on that yes. book. All right, guys, thank you for the time, man. This has been an You're awesome. Welcome. Be thank blessed. You. Thank you. Blessed. All right. Thank you. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by Audley Stevenson. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, be audacious.